For now, we're joined by Phoenix Sproles, JMU wide receiver, former North Dakota State Bison, uh, but finished out his collegiate career with the Dukes. Phoenix, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing fantastic. And uh, as your your collegiate career is wrapped up, you're now preparing for the NFL draft. Can you kind of mm -hmm. take us through what that preparation's like and uh, how things are going now post grad? Yeah, I mean, so far it's been really good. Uh, we just got done with our first week um, down here in Delray Beach, um, a little bit in Boca Raton as well. Uh, weather's been good. You know, can't complain. I heard it's really cold. I heard it snowed in uh, Harrisonburg the other day. Um, so, not, so I'm kind of happy I'm not there right now. But, um, man, it's, it's been fun. Uh, week one was all kind of pre-test. So, like, your, um, your vertical, your broad jump, bench press, shuttle, or 5-10-5, whatever you want to call it, L drill. Um, I think we're doing our 40s this week. Um, but getting all those pre-test numbers in and then um, building that foundation to, you know, get started. And that's what this week's for. So it'll be our first official week besides last week, which was testing. Um, and it's a 7, 7.05 a.m. wake up and I get back home around 3.40, 4 p.m. So it's like a like a job. Um, but it's uh, it's what you what you have to do to get to where you want to go. What's that process like of, of picking where you want to train? I guess what what sent you down there? What were your connections like that that made you, uh, I guess, pick your training spot? Yeah. Uh, so thankfully, um, I've been training with these, the guys that I'm training with right now since I was 13, 14. Um, they're called Game Face. They're, uh, I'm, from, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and that training facility is based out of there in Minnesota. Um, and uh, these past couple of years, I've been doing combine prep down in Florida. Uh, with lifetime and um so it was an easy decision for me what i wanted to do i wanted to trust the people i've been training with my whole life and um, i've had other friends go through that, that process at game face as well the training facility and they had nothing but good things to say about it and um it was a no-brainer for me so it was easy yeah as you're going through the process are there any kind of like what are the benchmarks you're going through like are you trying to get to your your 40 a little faster are you trying to Im increase your you know, your shuttle, like what is it that you're really focusing in on during this draft prep process? Honestly, everything. Um, you can always, there's always room for improvement. I don't think I'm perfect in any area. Um, I can always jump higher, run faster, um, change direction more flu fluid, fluidly, change direction more fluidly. Um, so I'm, I'm, every drill we're doing, I'm going 100%. Um, so I'm, I know I want to get the best numbers possible for pro day. Um, so yeah, but uh, I think the 40 obviously is everyone's, go to they want to wow everyone with the 40 so that's definitely in my in my mind that's like something i definitely want to prove um because i know a lot of people are are probably wondering how fast is how fast is he and um you know i'm gonna show i'm gonna show that at pro day i mean it might not matter that much puka nakua what he ran like a four nine this year and yeah, he's showing yeah. that out there but <laughs> yeah, definitely so I, that's one thing that's another big thing you know um obviously the teams want to see a fast 40 but at the, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, your production. What, what can you do with what you got? And uh, Puka, he do what had the best receiving yards for, I don't even, I don't even know what, the, what the, the stat was, but he had the best receiving yards in the season. Um, so it's all about production. What can you do when the ball's in your hand? And um, how consistent can you be? Awesome. How would you assess, I guess, this last year at JMU? I know, I think you said in some interviews when you came in, part of the, the reason was trying to prepare yourself for the NFL What's it like to be in an offense where you've got a lot of receivers who are capable of getting the ball and you're also trying to get sort of those, um, I guess, individual production for yourself for the next level? How do you balance, I guess, being a great teammate and then also trying to go get yours when you're out there? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone wants to be the guy, but uh, at the end of the day, um, it's, all, it's all about the team. Um, you know, everyone contrib contributes in their own way. And in the NFL, you have guys that are world-class football players that are the number two, number three, number four receivers that still do their part. And, you know, if that's my role at the next level, cool. If my role is to be the guy, cool. Either way, I'm going to be, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be okay with it. Um, whatever, however it shakes out, I just want to um, get to my goal, which is the NFL, obviously the highest level and uh, showcase what I can do as a football player. And, you know, if that is the, the number one receiver and that's how, it, that's how the offense, that's how it fits. Perfect. And if I have to be the two or the three, perfect. I can do that too. And, and kind of switching gears over to more of your game, you experienced during your time in, in Harrisonburg. You seem to really find the stride later on in the season, I believe 20 catches or something in the final two games. But overall, kind of that final stretch, you really found that that groove in the offense. 
what was the season like as you went through? Was it Reggie was balling out to start and there was a little Elijah and then you kind of found the role there or, or was it just kind of how the offense came to you as the year went on? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm never that guy that's going to demand the ball. None of the, none of the, none of the, none of us receivers did. None of us demanded, Oh, I need these many targets. It's just kind of how the offense shook up. And, um, you know, I, I'd do my part whenever the ball came my way, whatever, you know, if it was coming across the middle, running a bubble, getting extra yards, whatever it may be. And that's kind of like how we all kind of fit in in that in this offense this year. You know, you had Elijah and Reggie, two 1,000-yard guys. And then my five, my almost 500 yards, that was a big part too. It might not jump out, but like the, the plays that I did have, they were big plays that contributed in some way, shape, or form. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I love playing with those dudes, and I, I wouldn't change how that season went for anything. You know, you can't always have the numbers you want. But at the end of the day, I got to contribute to what eleven and two or ten and two season, first yeah. JMU bowl game. Um, so there's a lot of good things that came from it. What was it like uh, working with Jordan this year? I know you two were were roommates. How did you sort of develop that chemistry on the field, off the field? It, it certainly seemed like one that uh, on the field at least was was pretty strong by season's end. Yeah, just be, just being around each other. Um, like obviously, you know you're. Uh, or six year, six year, six year guys. <laughs> um, we kind of just, you know, like, ah, we got to do this all over another year. Like six years in college is a long time, especially doing college football. And I think that's kind of what brought our bond closer was just the fact that like we're the older guys on the team and, you know, it's mentally, it's a lot, you know, you're going through another fall camp, another spring ball could, I think it was my fifth fall, fourth or fifth fall. I don't even know, fall camp. And um, those, you know, those definitely drain you. But we, we stayed close. Um, worked in the summer and off season. Uh, worked in the obviously during spring ball, and then when the season came, it was just time to showcase what we could do. And um, he found me a, a lot more towards later on in the season. And uh, now he's training right now. And you know, he's. I think it was just a perfect kind of, kind of like a, a happy ending to the story. You know, we got we both got what we wanted. I got opportunity to show what I could do, and obviously he balled out and got to show what he could do. <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned six years, and I don't if you're not able to if you don't know or, or something like that. But we've just been a little curious with Jordan potentially yeah. going into his seventh year. It, it, is he gearing up to to find a, a home for 2024? Do you are you able to speak on that at all, or um, yeah, kind of yeah. that's a lot? <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. Um, I know he's definitely doing a seventh year. I don't know where. Um, I just called him the other day. Um, he's got a he's got options lined up, um, but he's actually working with a quarterback coach, um, getting everything fine tuned and ready for his seventh year. I think he's either down in, he's from Tampa. I don't know if he's somewhere down, else down in Florida or he might be, um, it might be Tampa. No. Yeah. He lives in Tampa. It might be, could be Miami or Fort Lauderdale. I don't know, but he's training somewhere, um, getting ready for his seventh year. And, um, hopefully soon he comes out with something. Cause I, I'm curious too. Cause I actually text him. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he's trying to. I guess he's trying to just hold off on it a little bit longer. But uh, now, nah, wherever he wherever he ends up, uh, it would be the right move for him. Yeah, the the portal season nowadays is is the wild. I've ex experienced that a little bit, but yeah, it's it's crazy. I was curious. You had tweeted, I guess, a few weeks ago. Uh, you went through your whole six year career without any fumbles. Uh, I know you, you blocked a lot, receiving uh, a few handoffs. I think JMU fans were on the wrong end of one of those at, at one point. Uh, but how would you, um, I guess, describe your game and sort of when did you start liking the little aspects of being a receiver? Is that something that you always liked? Like freshman year in college, you you pride yourself on not fumbling. Is that something that developed over the years? When did you develop all those traits? Yeah, um, man, I think it goes back. I got to I gotta give a big credit, obviously, to JMU, but um, to North Dakota State. Uh, I was there for five years. And, um, man, the attention to detail was just, um, it, it was top tier. It was right, right there at JMU. Uh, I know JMU. They every day we had almost almost every day we had some type of ball security drill. Um, but at North Dakota State, when I got to develop my skills early on in my career in college, um, man, I just remember we did so many ball security, so many different types of ways, um, to like jump around on one leg and and spin and like have someone punch at the ball with like a, a stick or something and have be able, be able to hold on to the ball still. Um, so I know that that's really big there at North Dakota State, just doing little things right, holding on to the football, and then um, and it ended up translating to JMU as well. They they harped on those, Coach Zunetti and his staff harped on those things almost every day, protect the ball, the ball's a program. And um, that's something I just pride myself in, just um, you don't want to be that guy that turns the ball over from a, a silly mistake. We're, we're not covering it. Obviously, things happen, but, um, you know, 
I think holding on to the football is usually self-inflicted. And, um, I, you know, I'm blessed to say that I never fumbled in my college career. And um, going back to your other question about what kind of player I am, I think I'm just a consistent player that um, knows his, will, will know his assignment and will do everything possible to make sure I'm perfect on that assignment, um, whether it's blocking, whether it's catching, whether it's running with the ball. Uh, whatever you, whatever you want, whatever you want to say. Um, I think I'm a consistent player that does the little things right, and um, and, it, and, it, and it shows. That's an insane stat. No fumbles. That's that's impressive. It is. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, looking back at this last year with JMU, are there any kind of big moments that that you'll remember going on past your your JMU career? Like, what what is a, a memory from this past season that really sticks out to you? Yeah, I mean, I have a, a bunch, but uh, I think the ones that can come to my head right now is obviously the University of Virginia game. That was just a huge game. Um, kind of like a, really like a standpoint in our season, like, okay, JMU's a team to reckon with. Um, you know, playing a Power 5 team, an in-state rival, or rival, an in-state team, um, getting it done away. You know, everything was stacked up against us. Uh, we were down a little bit as well. Uh, came back in the, rainy, in the rain and got to finish it, just show what kind of team we were, uh, what type of grit we had as a team. And then um, so that was one of them, and the second one, um, was kind of a personal one, but the Armed Forces Bowl, I felt like, you know, going out, obviously the goal is to win the game. That, that's always the main thing. Um, we fell short of that. But me personally, I think just, you know, I couldn't go out um, personally as, as a receiver. I think I had one of my best games just overall. Um, and it was, happened to be in, in JMU's first ever bowl game. And, um, you know, it was just so much, so many emotions just being my last college football game. And, Jamie's first bowl game and um, just got to showcase what I could do one last time. What was that bowl prep like? I mean, from the outside looking in, it seemed like it was a whirlwind for you guys. You had an offensive line. Robo's a great coach, but you got an offensive line coach who's been with the offensive line all year. All of a sudden, the head coach, you're, you're kind of figuring some things out. This, this guy from Lafayette from the 90s is now coaching <laughs> some stuff in there too. Like, what was that bowl prep like? It was honestly – Obviously a little bit different, but it felt normal. Um, Coach Robo did a tremendous job of keeping everything similar to how we practiced throughout the whole year. Um, and so I give a big hats, a big hats off to Coach Robo and, and the guys he brought in, um, his his former coaches and players he played with, and um, I think he played with some some of the guys as well um, that came in to help, basically just put away their lives for three to four weeks to come help out a college team play football. Um, they could have easily just said no. They all came, um, stayed in Harrisonburg for four four weeks, and uh, helped us put our best foot forward for this bowl game. And um, you know, I like I said before, I give my hats off to Coach Robo, but hats off to that staff um, and just the staff as a whole, all the GAs um, that stepped up and uh, had to be almost position full on full time position coaches. <laughs> and um, man, it, it it was good. It was a uh, it wasn't hectic. It wasn't crazy. It felt like a normal practice. Um, but, uh, yeah, just hats off to Coach Robo and the guys who brought him. I was curious, quick one, going back to the NFL, uh, with Darren Sproles, I think your bio says your stepdad played for the Vikings. I guess growing up, what's it like to have those NFL connections? How has that sort of helped you uh, as you prepare to, to go into the league? It's, you know, it's like an expectation. Um, you know, when you've seen or I've had two people in my family that have done it, it's like, okay, it's possible. It's not. It's not a dream. It's not. It's not something that's unachievable. Like it can be done with hard work, um, dedication, and um, just consistency. And um, having two people in my family that have done it, it gave me that that clarity. Like you know, if I if I do all the little things right, give everything I have, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a, a decent decent to good shot at, at hopefully getting signed or getting drafted, whatever it may be, um, to the team. That's awesome. And my last question before we let you go. You probably have the most insight on what this wide receiver room is going to be next year because there's a lot of lot of question marks. There's a lot of potential there with Taji Hudson, Dollison, I believe, uh, Yamir Knight, Maxwell Moss. I'm probably leaving off a bunch of other guys too. But looking at that wide receiver room, what do you expect out of them in 2024? And is there any guy that you've kind of looked at and circled or in your mind you have high expectations for when you go back and you're watching JMU next year? Yeah, man, it's a uh... – it's going to be a very, very competitive room. There's so many guys that can start for Jamie right now. Um, a bunch of athletes and, and um, guys that are not even just athletes, but guys that are smart too. Um, like you mentioned, um, obviously Taji, Yumir, and Max are the guys 
and um, and Amarion are, are probably the three or four guys that rotate a little bit with me, Reggie, and Elijah. And um, I expect nothing. I don't expect no step off from uh, what us, me and Elijah and Reggie did. Um, I expect them to do even better. Um, Amarion, I think, is going to have uh, whatever his role is. I think he's going to have a crazy season. That's just um, something that I just truly believe the work he does and the type of athlete. I, mean, I haven't seen an athlete like him uh, personally. Um, that dude can run. He's strong. He can catch. He can <laughs> run routes. Like he's he's like a prototype receiver. That's what you want. And then you have obviously Yamir Knight, um, who can also do it all in the slot. And um, then you have Taji, who showed glimpses of what he can do this year. And he's only going to capitalize from that. And then obviously Maxwell Moss, um, just all guys that can play. And um, you know, I'm I'm excited. Like, I'm, I'm kind of I'm excited. I'm just I'm right there with you. Like I'm excited to see <laughs> what, how it's going to shake out, um, what's going to happen. But I'm definitely I'm, I'm still talking to those guys almost every other day, um, and just making sure everything's still good. Like they're still in the right headspace, and which they are. And um, they're all just hungry. They want to work. There's three, basically three receiver spots that are open. Um, all of us left technically. Um, so it's it's go time for them. You mentioned the uh, the UVA game being a, a big one for you. You caught a touchdown in that game, but but not from Jordan. Uh, when was that that play with Taji installed? And I guess yeah. what was your reaction when it was called in the huddle and and you knew it was coming your way? <laughs> um, man, and Ta- it's actually crazy because Taji was a former quarterback mm-hmm. in uh, high school, I believe. So. Um, and we had trials coach. We never, we put the plan on, I think on Wednesday, but like before the season even started, and I think in, I think the week before UVA or, or before our first game of the season, I, I don't know. We just had coach Shanahan at the, the receivers coach at the time was just like, um, I need all the receivers up here. I just want to see you guys throw. And obviously, <laughs> you know, Taji had the natural arm and then like, that was it. He didn't say anything about it again. He was like, okay, Taji, you're the guy. And then, um, two, three weeks later, we're doing a play where Taji's throwing the ball. And um, we knew the look that we had, if they played a certain defense, which I think they're in man, um, um, it would be a perfect play because the guy came down, I was pretending to block down, and the guy pulled the trigger and, and pressed up field. And I just obviously just ran an out route, and Taji hit me and touched him. Was anybody uh, particularly bad in that wide receiver throwing drill? You have any guys throwing ducks out there for a little bit and quickly, quickly eliminated? <laughs> <laughs> I was one of them for sure. Um, me, who else? Who else can I? Who else can I put under, under the bus? Um, I know Amar Amarion can't throw. He can't throw. Uh, Elijah was trash. <laughs> uh, Reggie didn't even try. And who else? There was someone else that was. Blake Barnes actually had a really good arm too. He was a, a who just he just left the team. He was a, he was a senior that graduated. Um, but Blake Barnes, he could throw. So honestly, it could have been him or Taji. But honestly, Blake Blake could throw the ball a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, but I'm glad that worked out because in the end, those those points yeah. were were very much needed. So it always was. good when when those when those plays work out. Ben, anything else? I don't think so. Good luck with the uh, the draft prep. I know it's a, a long few months of prep, but but good luck with everything. I think Jamie fans are excited to see your future. I know North Dakota State fans are too. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Phoenix. Yeah, thank you, guys. Good stuff. Awesome insights there. Great question about who uh, was the worst thrower. I love that from for uh, Shanahan, just kind of like having him do the drill so you can throw and be like, all right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like what's going through their mind? You're like, okay, what's what's happening? Coach is all calling us up to the 20, and then That's he just gives all the ball, and he's like, throw. And then nice he's like, play. Then that's not that's not what our role is, coach. Um, now I'm excited to see Phoenix and what he does in his next step. I think, I mean, him and Reggie both go into the NFL draft, and I think both have potential to to make it onto a 53 man roster. Uh, come what would that be, September? Yeah, I mean, at the very least, they're they're going to play. I think professionally somewhere, right? Yes. So if it's um, ends up in a a different league, but no, I think with with Phoenix's game was just so steady all year. And I think the fact that he like didn't get deterred, he goes for like seven catches, 40 yards and a touchdown against UVA didn't have a catch against Troy and then sort of just stays with it throughout the year and had a huge end of the season. I talked a lot about how every time he caught the ball, he like didn't waste yards, very productive after the catch. I feel like he could definitely pick up somewhere given his game and speed and athleticism, all that stuff. Yeah, and then finished the year with 11 catches against Coastal, five more against Air Force, two of those being touchdowns. 
He just gets open a lot. Like it seems like one, if you put him in the correct scheme, like you not know, necessarily like your wide receiver one, but a guy who could contribute and yeah, make some stuff happen was phenomenal in the arm forcible crush coastal along with Reggie and Surratt, right? All three of them just absolutely <laughs> destroyed in that game. Yeah, Mr. Leeby says armed forces bowl MVP. Yeah, he he definitely was. And um yeah, I mean just your this a res, like I feel like the slot receiver role has been kind of changed a lot when you're talking about it with the NFL. Like you have yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown, who is just an electric number one receiver that they play in the slot. CD Lamb plays a lot out of the slot, things of that sort. But like you go back to like the Julian Edelmans and and the Wes Welkers and the grinders. I realized I named probably the two most never mind. Um, but like like that's what it used to be like what a slot receiver is, and it still is. And I think Phoenix, Phoenix Rolls really is like the prototypical perfect slot receiver. Yeah, just super productive. I'll be interested to see, I guess, how his his testing goes, but it does seem um like one of those guys that'll probably go overlooked, but wouldn't be surprised if he ends up like having a very nice professional career.